Well, welcome anglers. It is Teaching Fishing Tuesday and we are here in the studio. I'm Captain Lance Valentine. Today we're going to do something special. We're going to break down the eight steps. So in this program what we're going to do is we're going to take our first step, our most important of the eight steps, at the top of our list, which is location. And we're going to talk about the five things you need to think about to get in the general location. Then we're going to take a little break. We're going to come back and talk about it in detail. And remember, tonight because we are live, we can take your questions at the end of the program. So if you have some questions, questions about getting the general location right when you're out fishing, let us know and we'll get them answered towards the end of the program. So let's dig into breaking down the eight steps, our first step, location. Now I broke this down into five things I think are really important for you to understand when you start thinking about general location. Remember at this point in the process, our first step of our eight, we're just looking for the general area of the lake, river, or reservoir that we want to fish. We're not getting in detail yet, we'll cover that in our next step. Right now just a general area. So a couple things we're looking for. We need to understand what calendar period the fish that we're chasing are in. So remember, sometimes during uh, during the year, fish are in spawning, pre-spawn, post-spawn, summertime, fall time. We'll break those down a little bit later in the next segment. But understand what calendar period that the fish that you're chasing is in is going to put you a pretty good idea to be in the right part of the body of water you're fishing. Our second factor is bait fish. Now, bait fish is usually the most important, but again, there are calendar periods, mostly late pre-spawn spawn and early post-spawn, where bait fish are not as important as being close to spawning areas. So understand that bait fish are huge. We're gonna talk about how you can learn what bait fish are in your lake and how, where they go during times of the year a little bit later in this program. Water temperature obviously is a big dictator to where fish are going to be at certain times of year. Remember, water temperature is going to dictate where bait is, it's going to dictate where fish are comfortable, and it's going to dictate how important bait fish are because sometimes fish will be out of the right temperature to be where bait is. So all these factors are gonna to start to work together to get us in a general area. Water color and clarity is extremely important, especially for fish that need to see to bite. Fish like my favorite, the walleye. Bass and some other fish have a tendency to be able to feel and be able to thrive, actually survive and do very, very well in dirty water or dark water. Walleyes and some other fish that need to see, especially saltwater fish, have a tendency they need to see their prey before they can bite it. So we need to start understanding how water color and water clarity mixed with these other five factors are going to make make it easier for us to get into the right part of the lake. And then lastly, the fifth factor is to talk about underwater influences. Structure, current, deflection off breaks, steep sloping breaks, shallow slo sloping breaks. Where are these fish located at a certain time of year in a general part of the lake? So remember, at this point, we're not trying to find an exact location. We're just trying to find a place that fish should be based on where they are in their calendar period where bait fish are located that fish are going to eat, how water temperature is going to move not just the fish that we're chasing, but the bait fish that they're after, how water color and water clarity is going to determine where fish are going to be, and those underwater influences of both structure and current. Those five factors are really important. So let's back up a little bit. I want you to understand that when we work at step one, we're, look, we're talking about very, very general areas. So, so it may be simple as southwest part of the lake, the middle of the river, uh, the north end of the reservoir. That's all we're looking for. We're not looking for an exact location. We're just looking for a general location. I'm gonna show you a little bit later in this program how to go about that and some resources to use. But getting that down is the first most important step. Because remember, we can't catch fish unless we're fishing where the fish are. And one of the things we teach here at Teach and Fishing is most anglers spend a lot of time fishing where they have no chance of catching fish because they don't take these things into consideration and get that location right. So remember, calendar period, bait fish, water temperature, water color, water clarity, and underwater influences, all factors are going to help us get that number one step, the most important step in our eight steps, is location. Okay? So again, quick recap, calendar period, bait fish, water temperature, water color, water clarity, and underwater influences, all of those are going to help you find a general area to catch more fish. Okay, let's take a quick break and we'll be back to break these down in more detail and make it easier for you to get on fish every time you're on the water. Where are your lures? Custom okay. designed and I have. Spoon, <laughs> <generated> <laughs> and have crank baits for any okay. Okay. Can you grab me a watch? Check it. out the complete line of Warrior products, including the new Warrior XL Flutter Spoon, online or at your local tackle retailer. Probably made in Michigan. What's that? Trackstack Fishing Systems. Yeah. Manufacturer of high quality I walk along. Uh, 
rod holders, electronics mounts, downriggers, and fishing accessories. Any angle, don't worry about no, any just species, me. any boat. Trax Tech Fishing Systems, proudly made in Michigan. Rye Tech Marine, makers of custom designed transducer mounts and gimbal brackets. Great Wait, sonar performance starts with a quality transducer mount, and Rye Tech has the mounting option for any brand on any boat. Rye Tech Marine, making life a little easier on the water. Worldwide Marine Insurance. Don't get caught with a loss to find out you have the wrong insurance for your boat and fishing gear. Contact Bob Llewellyn today for a free checkup of your current coverage. Worldwide Marine Insurance. Anglers insuring anglers. Welcome back, anglers, to our eight-step breakdown. I'm Captain Lance Valentine, and tonight we are talking about location, number one of our eight steps, and the most important. Now, earlier we gave you five factors that we look at to kind of find the general location of a lake. So let's spend a little bit of time talking about each one of these in detail and kind of giving you an idea of what you need to think about when you're planning a trip. Now, remember. One of the things that we like to teach here at Teaching Fishing is a successful fishing trip doesn't start Saturday morning at the boat ramp. It starts early in the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, looking at some resources and having some idea of where you should be looking so you have a plan when you get to the lake. So let's talk about these five factors that we like to use to get us in the right place. Number one is calendar period. And what we're talking about here, this was actually an idea that was presented and put together by the, the folks in Fisherman years and years ago. And basically there's 10 different calendar periods and inside each one of those calendar periods, each species of fish is going to need specific things and have to be in certain parts of a body of water. So we have calendar periods like uh, pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn, post early summer, summer peak, late summer, fall transition, uh, late fall, winter time. So each one of those calendar periods, it's important to know where the fish that you're chasing is in their calendar period, what their needs are for that calendar period so you can start really narrowing down the part of lake that they're going to be using. Our second factor is bait fish. Remember, other than basically late pre-spawn, spawn, and early post-spawn, these fish are worried about one thing. It doesn't matter what species you're fishing for, they're worried about where their next meal is going to come from. So we really need to understand what kind of bait fish live in our lake and where they're going to be at different times of the year. So not just knowing how the bass that you're chasing or the walleye you're chasing or the pike that you're chasing, how they act. We need to understand what kind of bait fish live in our lake and how they act at different times of year because remember we've got bait fish up above water temperature, water clarity, and underwater influences because fish will be in the wrong temperature in too dirty of water if that's where the bait is. So we have to understand, we really have to do a lot of research, a lot of homework understanding what bait fish do and where they are. That is probably past calendar period, that is probably the number one factor to figure out what part of the lake the fish are going to be using. And remember, in a lot of lakes you're going have multiple choices of bait fish. So you may be in a typical lake where you have, you may have shad, you're, you're fishing a deep water lake, you may have shad, you may have smelt, you may have shiners, you may have uh, creek chubs, you may have perch. Each one of those types of bait fish may attract a different style of game fish at a different time of year, or the game fish are going to act different as they relate to each one of those bait fish. So there's a lot to think about here when you start to figure out what part of the lake to look at. I would make it simple for you. Figure out what the best option for the fish that you're chasing is at this time of year. That's the bait fish you want to key on. Figure out where they are. You're going to be in the right general area of the lake. Water temperature obviously is very simple. Most of the calendar periods are put together based on surface temperature. So it's a very, very easy thing to get on our sonar units, our GPS units. We have temperature probes. Understand that that's going to be a driving factor, not just in where fish are, but again, also back to where bait fish are. So understand that fish will be in water that's too cold or too warm if there's the right amount of bait fish there. So all this kind of starts to work together as we look at uh, a lake map. We'll show you how to do this in just a second. We look at a lake map and kind of start to narrow down the area of the lake that fish live in. Water color and clarity is extremely important. Again, if you're dealing with a fish that has to see to be able to bite, most saltwater fish, uh, like in my favorite game fish, the walleye, they have to see a bait. So I could have the right water temperature, the right amount of bait fish, but in water that's too dirty, the fish aren't going to bite. They may be there, but they're not going to bite. So I need to start looking for a part of the lake that has maybe less bait fish and maybe a less desirable water temperature, but better water color or water clarity. So as we go through this process, not only are these five factors important, but we kind of have to sort them based on what, what kind of fish that we're chasing. Hey, you know you can catch largemouth bass in really dirty water. They, you, a lot of vibration, big baits, rattle 
baits, spinner baits, baits that make a lot of noise, you can catch largemouth bass in dirty water. A fish like a walleye that has to see, you're going to have a tough time in that dirty water. So water color and water clarity are a big deal in general uh, locations in the body of water. And then lastly, underwater influences. We're talking about structure. We're talking about wood, weeds, rocks, bottom composition. We're talking about steep drop-offs. We're talking about current. If you fish in a body of water that has a river coming in or out, or if you fish in the Great Lakes, or you fish the ocean, or you fish brackish water, we're talking about current can be huge. So we may be in the right part of the lake, but we may have to adjust what part of that lake we fish because the current has been adjusted by the wind. So all of these are things that good anglers think about. I want you to understand this. The guys who are consistently successful, anglers who consistently catch fish when others don't, usually don't do it because they're better fishermen. They usually do it because they're in the right place more often. I have a saying when we teach seminars, I'd rather be a really bad fisherman with the wrong presentation in the right place than I would to be a good fisherman with the right presentation in the wrong place. So what we're trying to do in step one is take these five factors, narrow them down, take a big body of water, and find a small area that's going to give us our best chance for finding fish. Okay, so again, calendar period, bait fish, water temperature, water color, water clarity, and underwater influences. Again, this may, this, the, the, the way, order of this may change a little bit based on calendar period, but most of the time that's where you're gonna look. Okay, let's take a quick little break and we'll be back, show you the resources that we use to figure out what kind of bait fish in the lake, what kind of calendar period, and how we can figure out water color, water clarity, and underwater influences by using the internet and some great printed material. Stay tuned, we'll be back with more. Warrior Lures, custom designed and painted spoons, blades, and crankbaits for any species of fish. Check out the complete line of Warrior products, including the new Warrior XL Flutter Spoon, online or at your local tackle retailer. Proudly made in Michigan. Trackstack Fishing Systems, manufacturer of high quality mounting track, rod holders, electronics mounts, downriggers, and fishing accessories. Any angler, any species, any boat. Trackstack Fishing Systems, proudly made in Michigan. Rytec Marine, makers of custom designed transducer mounts and gimbal brackets. Great sonar performance starts with a quality transducer mount and Rytec has a mounting option for any brand on any boat. Rytec Marine, making life a little easier on the water. Worldwide Marine Insurance, don't get caught with a loss to find out you have the wrong insurance for your boat and fishing gear. Contact Bob Llewellyn today for a free checkup of your current coverage. Worldwide Marine Insurance, anglers insuring anglers. Fishhawk Electronics, providing lure speed and water temperature at any depth. Featuring hardwired models X4 and X4D and the new portable X2, anglers can have the fishhawk advantage anywhere they fish. Trolling without a fishhawk is simply called boating. Max Lure, the original since 1969. Catch more fish with the wedding ring spinner, smile blade, double D dodger, flashlight attractor, and more. Max Lures, a legacy of innovation for 50 years. Macklin Heating and Cooling, experts in the installation, maintenance, and service of home comfort systems. Family owned and operated in mid-Michigan for 50 years, Macklin Heating and Cooling, where your comfort matters to us. Procure Bait Sense, manufacture of high quality bait scents, cures, and dyes. Made with whole fresh bait, Procure scents perfectly mimic what fish eat every day. Procure, helping anglers worldwide catch more big fish. And we are back. Welcome back to this episode of Teach and Fishing. We are talking about eight steps breakdown, and we are breaking down our number one step, the most important thing you have to do to catch fish, and that is to be in the right location. Now, earlier in the program, we gave you some factors, calendar period, bait fish, water temperature, water color, water clarity, and underwater influences that dictate what part of the lake you need to start your search looking for fish. So. Let's talk about how we kind of find all this information and put these resources to use. Now, calendar period, I'm gonna kind of go back uh, old school. I know we're in 2020 and everybody loves digital stuff and everybody loves the internet, but the calendar period is an in fisherman. If you guys are familiar with the, with the in fisherman uh, program, they really put together the calendar period of how these fish actually act and what the, what each fish needs at different times of year during different calendar periods. So, I would tell you, even today, as, as easy it is to kind of hop online and maybe watch a 30-second YouTube video, 
having some printed material is critical. Now, In Fisherman did a great series of books called Critical Con Concepts. They did it for six different species. And the first book in each one of these covers the fundamentals, covers the calendar period. They also did uh, the Wisdom series of books. And you can go obviously go online and look for fish calendar periods. But understand there's basically 10 different calendar periods determining what fish are going to do at a different time of year, where they're going to be, and what their requirements are. That's the most important part to figuring out what part of lake we need to start looking. Bait fish is next important. We need to understand what bait fish are in the lake. Now, I know here in Michigan, our DNR does a great job of doing netting surveys. They survey 30 to 40, 50 lakes a year, and they publish those surveys on the DNR website. So I would tell you, check out your uh, DNR website, whatever state you live in, and find where they have bait fish surveys. That will tell us what kind of bait fish live in the lake, and that's absolutely critical. We need to know what kind of bait fish live in our lake so we know where those bait fish are going to be. Now, we have a great seminar here at Teach and Fishing that covers bait fish, um, but find some way to understand what kind of bait fish live in your lake and where they're going to be at different times of year. I would tell you this, folks, if you know nothing, let's say you're a largemouth bass fisherman, don't learn anything about largemouth bass. Learn what kind of bait fish in the lake you're fishing where it's gonna be at different times of year. I promise you, you'll start catching more largemouth bass by fishing where the food is. That's just the way fish are. If the baits in shallow water weeds and six feet of water, the fish don't live in 40 feet and swim up to the weeds to eat and go back to 40. They don't do that. They live where the weeds are, live where the bait is. They live where their food is. Understand what kind of bait fish lives in your lake. Understand where it goes different times of year. I promise you, you're gonna catch a lot more fish. Water temperature, water color, and water clarity are all things we can get online. A lot of states have great uh, satellite overviews. I know the Great Lakes has, uh, through NOAA, we have a great overview of the Great Lakes. We can see water color, water clarity. We can actually see how wind is moving dirt uh, and dirty water, so we can kind of stay ahead of it every day. Water temperature, there's a lot of sources in every state that give you water temperature, especially of big bodies of water. Current flow is another one. We talked about underwater influences. Current flow, how much water is going down your river, that's gonna dictate where fish are. So spend some time at your local, uh, your regional and your state level DNR sites. Look for some of these things. Do a Google search, I guarantee you they'll come up. They'll, they'll come up. We are building our resource center at Teach and Fishing every day. We're finding new resources to give you good information. So check that resource out on the internet at teachandfishing.com. Go to the Resource Center. Lots of cool stuff there. And I'm going to ask you a question when we're done here with tonight so you can actually win a prize. We're going to talk about resources. Now, something else I like to do that I like to use, uh, I'm a big a record keeper. So every time I catch a fish, I record a bunch of data. I think there's like 18 different data points here. Water temperature, water clarity, water color. I love this data. I keep this every time I go fishing, no matter how many fish I've caught or how many times I fish a body of water. Then every year what I do is I kind of put all that data into a spreadsheet. So I know under certain conditions what part of the lake I've caught fish before. I kind of use that data in with this data and start looking for the right place to fish. And I'm also a huge believer in lake maps, guys. I know we've got great map chips now on our uh, GPSs, but you cannot see the detail of a whole lake on a GPS like you can on a big paper map. So make sure you have good paper maps, good paper charts of the bodies of water you fish. Last piece of advice on maps and charts, number one, carry them with you all the time. Number two, if there's multiple maps or charts of the body of water you fish, make sure you have them all because I guarantee you there's some things on some maps that aren't on the others. All right, so check out our resource center, lots of things there. Plan your trip before you go. I promise you're gonna catch more fish the more you pay attention. Stay tuned, we'll be back to take your questions to help you catch more fish. Fishhawk Electronics, providing lure speed and water temperature at any depth. Featuring hardwired models X4 and X4D and the new portable X2, anglers can have the fishhawk advantage anywhere they fish. Trolling without a fishhawk is simply called boating. Max Lure, the original since 1969. Catch more fish with the wedding ring spinner, smile blade, double D dodger, flashlight attractor, and more. Max Lures, a legacy of innovation for 50 years. Macklin Heating and Cooling, experts in the installation, maintenance and service of home comfort systems. Family owned and operated in mid-Michigan for 50 years, Macklin Heating and Cooling, where your comfort matters to us. Procure Bait Sense, manufacture of high quality bait scents, cures, and dyes. 
Made with whole fresh bait, Procure scents perfectly mimic what fish eat every day. Procure, helping anglers worldwide catch more big fish. Seven, six. Hi hey, anglers, welcome back to Teaching Fishing Tuesday. We are here, I'm Captain Lance Valentine, and we are talking about the eight step breakdown. Breaking down in detail our first, our number one most important step, and that is being in the right location. We've talked about some of the factors you need to do, some of the resources you need to have. So now, we've got a couple minutes here to actually open this up to your questions. So if you have a question about planning a trip, finding the right location, or anything we've talked about tonight, please feel free on the Facebook page to let us know. So we've got some some uh, good anglers in the audience actually here with us tonight. <laughs> and one of the questions was, hey, that's a great idea, but what if I'm short on time? What if I don't know, if I don't find out till Saturday morning I'm going fishing? What one of those factors is the most important? And I would make it very, very simple. Bait fish. Bait fish, bait fish, bait fish. Understand the kind of bait that live in the body water you're fishing, where it's going to be at the time of year you're fishing, I guarantee you you'll find some fish there, some game fish there to catch. Got another one? How much of a factor is wind and fish location? How much of a factor is the wind and fish location? It is a huge factor for a couple reasons. Number one, it can move dirty water or cold water or warm water to a certain spot and either attract or pull fish away from that because of the change in water color, clarity, or temperature. The other thing that wind can do, it can do two things with bait fish. Now, understand that bait fish aren't going to move to a shore just because there's a bunch of wind against there. Okay, if you have open water bait fish, they're going to stay in open water, but bait fish that are structure oriented or closer to shore, if you get wind pounding against that shore, you're going to see a movement of those bait fish into shallower water. Traditionally, you get a little bit of dirtier water, a little bit of mud line. These bait fish get a little more active. They come out of the structure. They're a lot easier for fish to catch. So, we've got the Easier to catch bait fish up against the shore where the wind is blowing. We've got open water bait fish schools aren't going to be as tightly packed. They're going to be broken up so the open water trolling bite can get a little tougher with a lot of wind. And wind is going to move water temperature and water clarity to an area and either move fish in or out based on if it's too warm, too cold, too clear, too dirty. So wind is a huge factor on where fish are going to be located. From uh, Corey Brown, you often say there are multiple good options but only one best option. How does that relate to different bait fish options in the Great question. I, I, I do say when we're fishing, there's lots of right answers every day. There's only one best, an, one best answer. So Corey asked me, how do we figure out the best bait fish? And that is going to be determined by what I'm trying to, that's a great question, Corey, what I'm trying to catch that day. Am I out for a day of fun and I just want to catch 40 fish in a hurry? Or am I out tournament fishing and I want to catch five big fish? So what I'm going to do is based on the calendar period is figure out what type of bait fish is going to be most desirable for the fish I'm trying to catch. A lot of small fish in one area or multiple or a little, a small number of big fish in very, very defined areas. That's going to determine where I fish. Now, being a charter captain, I want as many fish as I can get through as fast as I can get through them. So, I'm looking for shiners in the middle of the water column. Shiners that are going to pull fish up off the bottom and create big schools of fish. Now, I may be a tournament fisherman the next day. I may look for little small pieces of structure that may hold gobies and only have one or two big wallies on them. So, depending on what I want to catch, is going to determine what bait fish species I'm going to use as the most important that day, and then I'm going to go to that part of the lake to catch those fish that are feeding on that kind of bait. From the answers also, I'm assuming he's uh, referring to the Great Lakes. What are these changing water levels doing to predators and prey? That's a great question, and we got the right guy here to talk about that little, some, some show down the road. Uh, but traditionally what happens when you have high water, you traditionally have very good prey hatches. Um, flooded timber, areas that, that haven't been flooded before, you get a lot of nutrients, and most importantly, you get a lot of cover for young of the year bait to survive. So traditionally, we get really good shad hatches, really good shiner hatches on the years that we have high water. What's it going to do when the fish get out to the lake? That's kind of be determined. That depends on the time of year and where you're fishing. But traditionally, John, we get really good bait hatches on high water years, especially if that high water stays here through the spring. And especially if we get an early spring, and get a lot of warm water, we really get great bait hatches in high water years. Anything else? Yeah, someone asked a question about, um, you wondered how well it would work with the bottle cap lure, going back to talking about wind being a factor. 
He mentioned the bottle cap lures are designed to add bait inside of them. So I'm thinking maybe he's that talking about adding bait to a, to a lure possibly? Yeah, so, so I think what he's talking about, traditionally an old style lure was basically a piece of glass and you put a bait in there and you kind of screwed it tight so it looked like a live bait. Um, you know, I, I'm not a big live bait guy. I know you know we fish a lot of artificials, um, and we're going to talk about this as we go through the eight steps. One of our eight steps is you know the lure size and lure shape to kind of imitate the kind of bait fish. So to wrap all this up for the questions, the bait fish is the number one thing you want to factor on and understand that under, understand the bait fish that you want to focus on to catch the kind of fish that you want to catch is going to be your first indicator to use that map to find the right place. All right, let's wrap this up tonight. Thank you for joining us. Now we've got a contest we're going to give away a really cool prize so what i want you to do is go to the teachingfishing.com website click on contact us go to the email box fill in your name your email address and in the message box type in your favorite fishing resource where do you go online or what books do you read to give you the information we talked about tonight We'll do that for about a week, we'll get an answer, and we'll get a great prize pack to a randomly drawn winner. So we're excited about that. Let us know your favorite resource, and hey, help us out a little bit. If there's a resource that you like, let us know so we can add it to our resource center and help all the anglers that are watching. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to check out everything that's going on at teachingfishing.com. We've got articles, we've got videos, podcasts, lots of cool things. Please check out teachingfishing.com. Again, be sure to like and follow us on Facebook. Get your friends to do that. Check us out on Instagram at teachingfishing. I'm Captain Lance Valentine. Thank you for joining us tonight for our first episode of Breaking Down the Eight Steps, talking about location. We'll catch you back here next time at Teaching Fishing. Fishing.